and all the time. Amen. That I mean, it's. I think it's a good time to even we can close the service now, and all of us will be fed already spiritually. We danced our hearts out. Some of you. I mean, you can't watch these things without crying. The Holy Spirit really touches you to know that these are real people. You know, see, you you don't have a chance to know her as much as most of us do. It is such a such a great great honor to serve Christ and to love Him and let him, let Him love people through us. Can somebody say Amen? I want to remind you that tomorrow morning actually we are continuing we're going to finish our anniversary celebration there's going to be a baptism tomorrow morning and so um yes those of you who are staying you're going to be in for the treats awesome things there's some awesome things that are planned and so um those of you who can stay please choose to do that for tomorrow morning those of you who are going back home to your church god bless you and so we will still take time to go into the word of god um and then we have some people that we're going to be praying for and mainly just praying tonight for deliverance praying tonight to be disconnected from demons disconnected from spirits of the devil they hide behind our faults our limitations our addictions and our problems in Jesus name amen I know a lot of time has already been went on but we on purpose started six so we can finish at 11 and stuff so we have all the time how many of you guys enjoyed our worship and our praise yeah and maybe there are some people in here who you were completely thrown off by all of that don't worry it's okay and stuff so but we really really enjoy uh, that time and praise be to God for them if you have your Bible let's go to Gen Genesis chapter 41 I'm going to read the story about Joseph Genesis 41 and verse 55 I'm going to put it on the screen for you and for me and when all the land of Egypt was famished the people cried out to Pharaoh for bread then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians go to Joseph whatever he says to you do verse 56 the famine was over all the face of the earth and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians and the famine became severe in the land of Egypt verse 57 and all the countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the lands and if we can read from 47 chapter 47 and verse 15 so the money failed in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan all the Egyptians came to Joseph and said give us bread for why should we die in your presence for the money has failed how true is that verse becoming even today Joseph's story is very peculiar in the Bible and our, and our point is not to talk about Joseph our point is to talk about Jesus and then talking about Jesus to talking about solution for our own life changes for our own life and I'm just going to give you a few comparisons between Joseph and Jesus how he is like a shadow of the Lord Jesus Christ not the most perfect but definitely very powerful one you know we you see that from the beginning in Joseph's life he was actually had a miraculous birth his mom couldn't have children and same thing we see with Jesus he was born out of a virgin Mary we see that his father loved Joseph more than all other sons and Heavenly Father declared about Jesus he is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased we also see that Joseph and Jesus they were both shepherds of their father's sheep Jesus being the shepherd of people who are father's sheep we also see that Joseph and Jesus at youth went to Egypt we see also that they were sold both of them interestingly for the price of a slave Joseph was sold for the price of a slave and the Lord Jesus Christ was also sold for the price of a slave. We see that both of them they resist they became servants. Joseph was a servant then he became a slave. Jesus says I came to serve and not to be served. We see that also Jesus and Joseph resisted temptations. We see that later on not only that but they also were falsely accused they were condemned between two criminals Jesus hung on a cross between two criminals one guy went up to heaven the other guy went down and we see same thing with Joseph he was between two criminals one guy was promoted the other guy was demoted we see that Joseph and Jesus they also had a, they had a gentile bride Joseph was not married to a girl from Canaan he was married to a girl from Egypt and Jesus's bride is not from a Jewish nation it's the church made out of Gentiles and we can go on and on and on and we see that eventually 
that they were Jesus and Joseph they rose to power they were not recognized by their own brothers they had a seven-year hardship of the land and this speaks of the seven-year tribulation that is coming upon the earth where Satan and and the demons and his whole unholy trinity is going to rule the earth and then lastly and something that is still going to be coming is when Joseph reconciled with his brothers and that's the way we're going to see when Jesus's feet will step on the mountain of olives when all of this mess is going to be happening with the great tribulation, all of the suffering, all of that antichrist, the false prophet and false teachers, all of that crazy stuff will be happening. And toward the end of that, the Bible says the Lord Jesus Christ will land on this earth. His feet will land on the mountain of olives and people will see him and they will weep. The Bible says his own brothers who crucified him and they will repent and they will accept him as their Messiah. And that day is still coming. So we see in the life of Joseph, we see a picture of Jesus Christ. And I want to take just one simple part of that that I did not mention yet right now. How Jesus Christ is like our Joseph. In the sense, when there was a famine, way before the famine, that Joseph prepared a storehouse. And in that storehouse, he stored all the extra grain for the time of famine. He did that before the famine. Same thing happened with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that Jesus was slain before the foundations of the earth. What that means is that before God created the earth, before men were created and way before men fell into sin, God already had a plan. In case we fall, God will find a way. That means no problem can come into our life and into our world. God is not prepared with a solution already. If God prepared the greatest solution before even the problem existed, that means that there is no problem you can face, God has no solution for. No mountain you can have in your life, God cannot move. No sickness, God cannot heal. No problem, God cannot solve. We see Joseph stores grain in the stores, in the storehouses. But we see that Jesus Christ, he stores grace. He stores his mercy. He stores his power in the storehouse. Bible calls Calvary. In the storehouse, Bible calls the cross. In that storehouse is where all the blessings of heaven are located. In that storehouse is where all the heavenly deposit is located. Heaven does not have riches for you. It has transported all of them on the earth in the place called Calvary. Calvary is not a physical place that you can go to Israel and see. Calvary that I am referring to is a spiritual place. It's a place that is already secure in a spiritual world. It already exists. All the blessings you need in your life are already in the spiritual world in the Calvary of Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? In that Calvary is grace for our sin, mercy for our wrongdoing. There is no other place in this world that will offer that to you. No other place in the world that can delete a shame. No other place can undo a guilt from abortion. No other place can remove a trauma from sexual abuse. There is really no other place that can cause someone who went through the deepest betrayal in marriage to find forgiveness, hope and best future hope. That place is only one place. It's the Calvary. Under the Calvary you can find forgiveness first of all for yourself. Under the Calvary you can find peace in your own soul when you cannot stand yourself. When you cannot be at peace with yourself. When you hate yourself. When you cannot forgive yourself. There is only one place where you can find forgiveness from God to yourself and it's in the Calvary. It's in the Calvary. In the Bible in the Old Testament it gives us the scripture that no weapon formed against you. It says no weapon formed against you and every tongue that rises against you, you shall condemn. And then afterwards it says that this is the heritage of the Lord and the righteousness is from me. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you will condemn. What does that mean? That means that in the court of your consciousness, in the court of life, in the court of eternity, Satan comes with accusation against you. 
he comes with evidence he comes with facts he comes with proof that you are a sinner you lost your virginity that you have abused drugs that you have come from a wrong kind of a family there is a curse on your family he brings evidence against you and he says your life is over you will never amount to anything and he hammers and hammers and more facts and evidence because satan never comes into a courtroom without facts and when all of that is done god says you were able to rise up and condemn the condemner if you ever done something wrong you know the plaguing thoughts the accusing voices that like little like needles go into your body and there's nothing you can do to fight them back and God says this audacious thing you'll be able to rise up against the evidence and the facts against you and shut them down why how and God gives us how he says because they are my heritage and their righteousness comes from me not their behavior through the Calvary when Satan brought his best evidence because of the Calvary you have the audacity to get up and say devil you don't have all my sins on the list there is few more you missed let's add them make them complete Satan you don't know all of my thoughts that I was thinking let's add them as well and you shock the devil knowing that Satan I am aware of the evidence leveled against me and when all of this is done we will take a red ink and mark your list from one corner to the other and simply write it down Satan my righteousness comes from Jesus Christ not from this list and the Bible says you will silence the accuser and Satan will roll his paper and walk out that is only possible not because you watch too much TED talks motivational videos or you have this awesome quotes on your Instagram every single day to bump your day it's none of that it's not because you finally made peace with yourself it's because you come to the Calvary where Christ paid a price for your sin and you're looking at him and you know nothing good belongs to your life but you know nothing bad belongs to his either and because of that you can receive the good because he received the bad that I deserve I received the mercy because he received the sin that I deserve in the Calvary not only I find grace in the Calvary we also find freedom we find freedom from demons demons use any opportunity today to inflict people's lives they use drugs disobedience to parents they use witchcraft of our ancestors they use stealing they use lying they use Ouija boards they use all kinds of dream catchers they use all kinds of occultic elements they use all kinds of ways to be able to come into a person's life and this is what demons do they don't necessarily possess your whole life they possess a certain emotion they possess a certain habit a certain act a certain addiction they take it into their hands for some people it's the anger for others it's the small little cigarette you're looking at that and you're like there is no way in this wide world this thing can hold the power over 205 pound man it does because a demon takes a control of one person's a part of a person's life and in that area where satan has a control listen to this you will always have no control you will be completely out of control and he inflicts sometimes he brings limitation he brings suffering and we are here today to know that in the Calvary on the cross of Jesus Christ we not only find forgiveness for our sin and we can get a ticket to heaven but in the cross of Jesus Christ you have the right even if the demons that are tormenting your life have come because of your own foolish mistakes you come to the Calvary and God opens the door see you open the door through sin to the devil but today we can open the door to God to get rid of the devil through the Calvary through the cross can somebody say amen we've seen people be free but most importantly we've seen people understand spiritual world and live their life in freedom guys who were on drugs people who at church were being nauseous 
people who would constantly have problems with smoking with drinking some who had a curse on their life of financial limitation they take one step forward and constantly three steps backwards those who constantly had some kind of diseases others who had shattered relationships and they got married and the curse began to kick in because of the Calvary the curses of the family they stopped with them and the blessing of Abraham started to go these are not empty words that are coming out of my mouth these are not simply statements this is people's dramas people's lives and people's destinies when Israel was in Egypt they were not just in bondage to Egypt because behind Egypt were demons Egyptians were witchcraft people Egyptians practiced occult they practiced magic behind everything that they did was a demonic power the reason they were so successful to keep a big nation is not because they were brilliant or smart it's because in the spiritual world they were connected to demons themselves that's why they couldn't Israel couldn't get out on their own without the Holy Spirit coming and not just breaking the pride of Pharaoh but breaking the power behind pride of Pharaoh which was the devil and when God broke that through the blood of the Lamb, Israel, the whole nation got out. Israel, the whole nation escaped and they eventually found their freedom. Under the Calvary, we also find our healing. Healing from our disease. As we prayed for the sick today, if you are sick in your body, under the Calvary, you find your healing. It's interesting that when Israel got out of the Egypt, the Bible says that there was none of them who were feeble. The scripture says even their feet were not swollen. None. And God says that I will not put the plagues I placed in Egypt on you if you remain obedient to me. It's interesting that about a million people in the wilderness, malaria, infections, no pure water, no hospitals, no all kinds of vaccine, no tablets, no vitamins, nothing. And this whole nation, not one was sick. Under a covenant, the Bible calls a shadow. What they experienced was a shadow of the reality that is offered to us today. That means that we are able to live in healing, to live in the health of God and in the blessing of God. Can somebody say amen? Same thing with prosperity. We see when Israel was in Egypt, when they got out, that they didn't leave empty. But the scripture says they left loaded. That's my version of left not empty-handed. They left prosperous. And God not only left them prosperous, He provided for them in the wilderness. And when they entered the promised land, He gave them land flowing with milk and honey. It is the will of God under the Calvary to break every curse of poverty. As long as I live, I'm going to preach that. We see the need. I see people suffering almost every day. 70% of people in America live from paycheck to paycheck. People are hurting and people are suffering. Families are in deep stress because of money. Christmas season and all kinds of seasons coming up and people are just reminded of what they don't have and this is happening in America. And I believe that under the Calvary, no I don't believe that Jesus came and bled so we would drive a Mercedes. But he wants to break a curse of limitation, stagnation and all kinds of poverty in people's lives. So that the blessing of Abraham comes upon their life that they can be a blessing to other people. That they go from suffering to survival and from survival to success. And they go from Egypt into the promised land. And God wants to unleash that into your life. God wants to bless your life. You may say, I don't qualify for that. Yes, because you're Lopez, because you're Martinez, because you're Pushkin. But when you recognize that you have a Calvary, through the Calvary, you have a new name. Your father is the heavenly king. Your father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Your father... He has streets made out of gold. If this offends you that I have a little golden looking thing, it's only somebody gave this to me today. This is only to remind me where I'm headed. Everything's going to look like this under my feet. People who believe that God wants us to be poor will be extremely disappointed in heaven. People who believe that God won't imagine going to heaven and seeing how much God wasted gold by putting it on the streets. 
diamonds things that we don't even see on this earth they will just be stones just simply all stones of these kind of rocks our God is not a Christian God he is almighty God he is a rich God he is a mighty God he loves people yes wealth is not the most important thing but if there is a curse in your life and it's been on your family everyone in the family never makes it you've never had it in your life when there was not one credit card that is not paid off there is constant financial struggles I want to tell you something the Bible says Jesus Christ became poor that you will be enriched through his poverty that means that the curse of poverty will be broken over your life what does that mean? That means that anything you place your hands in prospers. That means every time you get a job that company gets better because you are there. Because when time comes to lay off they say we can't lay him and her off. Why? Because they are too important to this company. That is called the blessing of God which does not add sorrow to itself but it enriches. Can somebody say amen? We're not talking about money falling from heaven. We're talking about grace. To make you successful at what you do that causes you to have more than enough to meet the needs of your family causes you to have more than enough not to live from paycheck to paycheck and live in debt but to live from overflow to overflow and that somebody can be blessed because you are blessed the scripture says when the righteous are prospering the city rejoices but when the wicked prosper the city hides the city is afraid because when the wicked has money we have more prostitutes on our streets we have more drive-by shootings we have more all kinds of demonic agendas spread through the politics why because the wicked always sponsor their demonic ideas satan wants the wicked to have money and satan wants the, the righteous to have a poverty mindset but through the calvary you can have a new life in the area of your finances this is not about money but this is about a blessing that blesses your finances in Jesus name I want you to receive a new picture today that in the Calvary you don't have to live in shame and guilt you may say Vlad you don't know what I've done I don't have to I know what someone else has done for you he paid a price for you if you can't forgive yourself let me tell you he is saying he forgives you if he has a standard higher than yours how dare you do not forgive yourself you're not even God if God who finds faults in angels can forgive you and can live with peace that what you've done and dismiss that listen you're not even close to God that you cannot forgive yourself humble yourself and receive that forgiveness humble yourself and receive that grace receive that mercy same thing when it comes to healing fight against the sickness do not receive that sickness as yours as that means that you shouldn't use medicine no that means you should use medicine it's the whole idea that God does not want you to be sick and we believe that a lot of religious people believe that in their subconscious because on Sunday a pastor gets up and says may God bless everyone who is sick and give them faith to persevere because it is the will of God for people to suffer and it's funny how the same pastor or the same people and next day go quickly to the doctor and say doctor remove that sickness that the pastor blessed me to endure in reality we are not that religious we know instinctly sickness we don't like it God doesn't like it either don't lie to yourself don't be a hypocrite if you're going to the doctor on Monday go to the best doctor on Sunday there's nothing wrong with going to the doctor on Monday we're not against that what I am against is people pretending Jesus is not the doctor on Sunday he is the greatest doctor and the greatest physician by his stripes we can be healed you may say well says everybody does everybody you guys pray for gets healed every person who has died in Tri-Cities has first went to the doctor yet that is not an argument to close down hospitals nurses and all of the doctors that is not an argument to fire every doctor and sometimes we pray for one person two people and somebody doesn't get healed and you throw the whole thing out of the water and say well God doesn't heal you don't even treat the doctors like that have a greater respect for a great physician and your faith in him than you have for your physical doctor can somebody say amen same thing applies to your freedom today I want you to receive if you notice in your life there is an attack if you notice in your life there is demonic activity that is hurting and withholding your life back if you notice the symptoms today this does not mean you have to understand first of all it's not about you being convinced that you got a demon 
it's about you being convinced that Jesus wants to get every evil thing out of your life that you will live full of the Holy Spirit assisted by the angels of God instead of resisted by the demons of the devil can somebody say amen in the conclusion I'm going to mention you three keys that Israel did write them down that Egyptians did these were the three keys that unlocked the storehouses the first one is faith and faith is when you know that you are a child of the promise and you don't have to be a slave of your problem faith they knew grain existed they knew their problem their famine is not going to turn into a funeral their famine will turn into a feast because Joseph has already planned for this when you are a child of God's promise you have a freedom in your mind no longer to be a slave to your problem if you are struggling with poverty I want to encourage you today do not become a slave of your poverty first of all be free in your mind become a child of God's promise the Lord is my shepherd I shall not lack that's who I am enslaved to if you are struggling in your health do not be the person who is a slave to your sickness some people are sick in their head the way they talk about their sickness oh I'm always sick something is always wrong with me and if they go for a day without sick they're tormented because why is nothing bad happening to me today they are shocked and surprised constantly expecting something bad change your thinking change your mind live a life here where you are above your circumstances maybe there is a famine in your house maybe there is a famine in your finances in your health in your ministry remember where the Holy Spirit is there is no famine he's not gonna come down to your level in your faith you have to come down come up to his level and be there in your spirit until your reality picks up to that level through the power of the Holy Ghost can somebody say amen let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ <laughs> Ilya mentioned Ilya mentioned when Moses was trying to get people out of Egypt and he tried all of these things and nothing was working he tried the tricks the tricks didn't work and God came to Moses and he was so frustrated he wanted to already quit and people on the top of that became so discouraged they said you gave a sword to Pharaoh to torment us and hurt us we told you to leave us alone and Moses complains and whines to God and you would seem like God would say Moses I'm so sorry I let you down let me just go and clean up the whole mess get rid of Pharaoh and let's just get out of here I don't have time for all of this but in the middle of that you will see I think it's in Exodus chapter 7 if I'm not mistaken God comes to Pharaoh God comes to Moses say Moses I make you a God to Pharaoh and, and Aaron is your prophet he said now you go God to Pharaoh Moses is not a God but what God was doing is God wanted to change Moses's zip code in the spiritual world God wanted Moses in the spirit not to come to Pharaoh as a slave begging for mercy he wanted to come to Pharaoh as a king demanding justice something happened after that declaration the Bible says Moses start bringing plagues until that no plagues every plague Moses pronounced was a direct insult and an attack on one of the chief gods Egypt worshipped gods went to war Moses rose up and the plague was a direct God it's as though through the power of Christ he was demolishing one idol after another one demon after another and only then their reality changed your reality won't change until your mind catches up with the revelation of who you are in God and you lift yourself up there even if your life is still somewhere out here this happens in your home group this happens in your health this happens in your single life and this happens in your finances don't wait until you get a promotion until you receive a revelation God has blessed me in Jesus Christ lift yourself up to the level of your faith lift your faith up there when your reality catches up to your faith you're in trouble because that means you stop living by faith then 
when the sickness leaves and you now live by your reality instead of constantly pushing further to live by faith constantly have greater dreams have greater dreams anytime you have a dream higher than your reality this is the space for the Holy Spirit to move but when your dream is at the level of your circumstances you give no room to God the key number two is prayer not only they believed there was a grain in a storehouse but the Bible says that they cried out to Joseph to open the storehouse prayer is when move it moves blessing from God's warehouse to my house prayer moves God's blessing from the Calvary to my own zip code prayer brings what God promised to what God did prayer is the link it's very important to understand you can't push a camel size blessing through an eye of a needle size prayer if you use ever if you go sewing or something rips and you use a little needle you lose a little thread to push through the eye of the needle that that little hole is so small and many times you gotta take the thread and lick lick it in your mouth so that you can push it through and it's it takes a lot of very very precise work to push it through you can only push tiny things through that small little thing many people have this kind of a prayer life and they try to push a camel through it that God, pastor said, God wants to bless me. Amen. I want to push that through as well. P pastor says that God wants to heal me. Amen. Pastor says he's going to give me a Boaz. Amen. Pastor said he's going to give me a business. Amen. And you combine all these 7,000, your camel is getting fatter, 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 fatter. Prayer life is getting smaller, smaller. You're like, wait, this is not working. You're trying to push it, push it, and the camel is not going through. The places were big blessings. See God already created the camel but for him to enter into your life you gotta have a door according to the size of the camel. Can somebody say amen? See when you look at the Winko store and Winko store represents kind of like our vision where the front door is decorated it's really nice and the inside has food and everything and people will come to church like the Winko but if you look at the back of the Winko you will see these doors over there they're not so painted they don't automatically open they're a little bit dirty they're a little bit unkept but they are very big size doors for the size of the trucks that go back there. One of the reasons our church has implemented morning prayers at five and they go on a whole day and different people come in. One of the reasons we have them on Sunday at 9 15, Saturdays, uh, Fridays at nine o'clock these prayers and as, uh, since the first conference is that you have to understand we got to stop lying to ourselves. You can't name it, claim it, blab it, grab it and confess it and possess it. After a while you start blabbing and grabbing and re recognizing it's not getting through to that little needle that I got. When you enlarge the prayer life, when the church begins to pray, God begins to move. God already has paid the price for all of those blessings. But for them to manifest, you and I have to be a prayerful person. Can somebody say amen? That's why we challenge every person in your own church. If you don't have a morning prayer, I ask you as you leave, start one. You will say nobody will come. You come and people will come. I remember in the beginning when our pastor implemented and said that we are going to come you know each morning and I kind of thought to myself I'm like man it's going to be kind of hard waking up every morning you know 4 30 or 4 35 and come to church because we did that only once a week for about a year. You know it's actually harder to wake up to morning prayer once a week compared to waking up every day. <laughs> We did the hard part a year before that and now this is the easy part because after a while you get used to it, your physical body get used to it. The times that I miss it now and I choose for kind of reasons that I come up with to miss the morning prayer, my body treats me like hell. It gives me headache. It keeps waking up every 15 sec, 15 minutes and I'm like go back to sleep. I told you we're not going to prayer today and the body is already prepared for it. God wants you to live a life of prayer if the blessings are supposed to come into your life. Can somebody say amen? And the last thing is sacrifice. Live in the light of eternity. Live in the light of eternity. Sacrifice is this. Egyptians, they came to Joseph and the Bible says they said we need grain 
and they cried out this is where prayer is they came to Joseph because they had faith he had a solution for them but we see also that Joseph doesn't give bread like our government you know gives food stamps or welfare or or anything Joseph didn't give anything for free he said guys do you have money they said we do and they gave him money see when there is a famine and everyone is everything is stopped your money is actually mean nothing inflation goes through the roof because that moment money bible says it failed if you're in the wilderness and you don't have a phone and you have been without water for two and a half days statistically in three days you're supposed to die and you have one million dollars your million dollars don't have a value your most important need in the wilderness is not another million dollars it's a glass of water and this is where they were in the light of the need they had they were trading their money to get something that would be far more important than the money that they had God wants you to live with this reality a spiritual famine is very real what does that mean that means every single person no matter how much money they make no matter what they achieve in life are all going to end up about six feet deep in a box you will be placed in there and everything you work for will be left behind for lawyers to fight you're not gonna take anything with you and if you think you're the clever one and smart one that can Bill Gates could will not Steve Jobs could not all the billionaires and millionaires could not and so will you live your life with the light of eternity it was like uh, two guys went to heaven and one rich guy and one poor guy one uh, poor guy who was generous and one rich guy they went to heaven and uh, the rich guy you know came in and Peter led him into a shack and the rich guy says what is this you know I went to church why am I gonna live in a shack and and he looks at the other guy who was generous serving and did everything with his life for the cause of Christ and he lives in a mansion so he comes to Peter he complains he says this is completely unfair heaven's supposed to be you know like every everybody equal and apostle Peter says hey guy don't blame me he says this all that I could build with the material you've sent this is all that I could build with the material you've sent eternity you can send your time your finances your gifts everything you have into eternity if you churn it to use it for the cause of the kingdom of God the most beautiful part about giving to the kingdom of God with your life with your gifts with your time with your finances is this when you actually give you're not really giving you are making room for God to give something better in the beginning it feels like you're giving but then after a while you begin to realize oh so God was trying to give something to me and that was taking the place so God had to remove it to give me something else God is very faithful you can never outgive God God will be faithful to you can somebody say amen and I, we begin to live the, with our team now we're really encouraging every person to do that sometimes we go a little bit unwise and radical and it always works out for us I remember a few a few months ago on my birthday actually I lost my iPad in the airplane and my birthday evening was so ruined because I lost my iPad and the problem was that I had a very sensitive information on the iPad and all of my passwords and everything which was a wrong decision that I had and I had no passcode on my iPad and it was lost somewhere in Alaska air, airline and they just somebody took it and I tried to find it nobody responded back and it was my birthday I was so depressed and discouraged and I was like oh God don't let nobody steal my identity and all of stuff and then the Holy Spirit just gave me the supernatural peace so everything will be fine enjoy your birthday go to the service preach and I've mentioned that in the service that God gave me this tremendous peace about my iPad and next day when I uh, in the morning I checked my email exactly at the time that I was mentioning that a person wrote me an email and said hey I found your iPad I just want to know if that's real you and if yes I will send you your iPad I say hey sir I'll send you 200 bucks as a gift he says no 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 I'll pay for everything don't send me a penny or I won't send you the iPad I was like no sir you can send me the iPad and some money with it if you want to <laughs> for my birthday gift and the compensation for my discouragement 
he sent me the iPad and I remember I was holding the iPad I was so happy in Ukraine and right there I was in Ukraine in uh, Vladimir Monchan's um, ministry and there I'm holding the iPad and the Holy Spirit is placing on my heart this desire he says Vlad in Israel every time a firstborn was spared God said because I protect it that belongs to me and I felt like the Lord was saying give your iPad away and at that moment you know we sold a rental property and we gave the money from the rental property which was a lot of money and I had no problem but the iPad was close to me. Twenty thousand dollars was easier to give than, than two hundred dollars. I remember holding on to that and, and I said Lord no that's my iPad. That's a miracle iPad. I can't give that to nobody. I wrestled with that for three days and I'm looking at myself I'm like what kind of a heathen am I? Wrestling with God over that foolish you know Apple iPad. But I made a decision. You know what Lord I'm going to give the first person that I will see that kind of comes to my mind, I will just give it to them. And a few, a few months later, uh, I saw somebody in the youth service that came and gave them the iPad. And so I just let go of the whole thing because, you know, by God's grace, was, we were able to give iPhones, furniture, cars, few cars. And then every time things always came back in a better shape. And the interesting part is that I decided I'm not going to use iPads no more. I'm going to use traditional ways. And on Tuesday, uh, a very uh, wonderful gentleman comes in to my office and says, hey, I uh, just wanted to bless you with an iPad and it's so much better than the one that I gave and I was like man if I would have known God had this I would have given it away a long time ago. God doesn't take anything that he doesn't have a plan to replace. <laughs> Yesterday I had a code, a uh, very nice code, bought it from Ukraine, my favorite code but it was a little bit, little bit too small on me because I'm growing bigger and uh, <laughs> go to the gym. And the young lady in the, in the lobby comes up and she said, where do you Russians get these coats? And I'm like, you like it? She's like, yeah. I'm like, try it on. She tried it on and I'm like, it's yours. And I forgot to ask my wife for that. And so, and she just left. I came home freezing, you know. And this morning, somebody gave me this golden t-shirt. God, we live a life as Christians. If you notice, if you follow our leaders, you will see sometimes driving a car and next day somebody else driving the car is like, what is going on? Oh, you find out they gave it away. But God always comes back and blesses you more. I had an incident last year around this time, a month before that. I had um, a Camry that I was driving and it's a very beautiful Camry, 2000, year 2000, black, beaten up a little bit. But it took me from point A to point B. And uh, me and my wife decided to give that away. And so when we gave that away and, uh, and after that gave her vehicle away and ended up actually without cars, no money no cars but we live close to church and we rejoice that we're just gonna walk to the Lord but honestly in a year later I look back today you know that God was able to bless us something I didn't even look for something I didn't even save for because I had other needs that I was saving for you know and God blessed my wife and and me with the vehicles that honestly <laughs> a year ago I would have never dreamed of having no debt no car loans and it's a better one that I ever dreamed of having and I look back today and I know one thing even this vehicle is probably gonna go somewhere else because nothing will stick to us if God can see all the things you have you're not attached to he trusts you always with more remember what you give to the kingdom of God you're not losing it you're letting giving room for God to give you something better don't ever be attached to your possessions don't be attached to your savings don't be attached to your clothes don't be attached to your bank account to your job have everything loose relationship with it so that God will have a close relationship with the blessing in your future because sooner or later you may say well I don't want to give it away I have a news flash for you you're gonna have to leave it away it's better learn to give things of course according with our prosperity according with our generosity and as God leads each one of us to live a life of radical generosity Calvary's blessings will be unleashed more and more in our life. If you think you're gonna live stingy, if you think you're gonna live greedy, if you think you're gonna hold on to every single penny and God will just pour out grace, even if He does, that grace has nowhere to stay. A heart that's greedy, a heart that's stingy, a heart that's clinches to everything, grace can stick because the essence of grace is self-giving. I challenge young people, you may say Vlad, you speak to the choir, young people they're broke. One of the reasons why we're broke it's because we have a broke mindset. We gotta live generous. We gotta be giving. We gotta be per people who sacrifice and give everything that we have in the little. If you can't be generous when you make $50 a week, you will never be generous when you make 50,000. Start today. Change the way you live. 
change the way your family is going to be live differently you will see God will prosper your life in a way that you do not know how you will be a testimony I heard a testimony right before the service where a gentleman did exactly the same thing that I was sharing and God just brought things back God multiplied and blessed it I believe God's blessing over your life I believe Calvary's blessing over your life I believe you will live a life of prayer I believe you will live a life of sacrifice I believe you will live a life of faith in Jesus mighty name I believe God's blessing of healing God's blessing of freedom and God's blessing of grace is going to be upon your life do you receive it tonight in Jesus name Let's rise to our feet right now in Jesus' name.